Greetings, Atlings. Welcome to another episode of A Day in the Life. Today we have Project Samantha in the house, a T30 Nissan X-Trail. And she came in with the usual discrepancies on the fuel gauge. So at times the gauge will not quite reflect what is happening. And for that, usually we have to come back here and uh, access the two pods. So we'll be looking at the pump and the fuel level center assembly. As is typical with these cars, there's quite a bit of crap back here. So most of the times there are toys, money, old receipts, just a bunch of crap. Earrings. Oh, this is interesting. Um, yep. So we'll have to first of all vacuum the place up so that when we pop the pods, we don't have that going back into the assemblies. So let's get to it and then we shall find out what's going on. But of interest, I can see these screw heads have been rounded off. So it looks like someone was here already. All right, we'll find out what they did. Based on the damage I can see on these uh, release locks, I always recommend go with a 5mm tipped flat screwdriver. That sits much nicer in the slot, so it doesn't damage anything. Alright, we have the covers popped off. Time to vacuum the inside. Perhaps it would be a good idea to unplug the connector first, but there's too much dust, so I'd rather clean it out first before I get in there. Like I was saying, this, uh, the locks, the locks are five mil, and this one goes smack in there, perfect fit. Yeah, so he doesn't end up breaking it. So, flat screwdrivers for the win, and as you can see, it's good to clean up because that is the original color of the plastic, while this uncleaned one, well, you can tell for yourself. So yeah, we'll do the same on that side, disconnect, and just make sure it's nice and tidy because the risk is if you open this up without it being clean, you'll dump all the junk into the tank. and That'll be a problem for your fuel system upstream. Okay, let's get to it. We are now on the bench and this is the pump assembly partially taken apart, so it sits that way. But I have removed it specifically because this is the surge tank. This usually carries a fair amount of fuel and I don't think you can see it on camera but even after you take it apart and it stops leaking out the element it still has a good amount of fuel. It, it's just to prevent the car running dry when you're low on fuel and maybe you're at an angle so the pump will always have something to suck on. Alright, so let's just put that aside for now and not let it drench us. Okay, so this is what we're interested in, and this is where the magic happens. So, oh, there's another one. This this assembly sits on the left side of the vehicle. This other one sits on the right side, but I'll explain that shortly. Uh, in there, you can see a spring mechanism that slides along some uh, serrated contact points. And that is how the instrument cluster gets its readings. Uh, basically, they have different resistances which then gives a certain voltage value and that value is converted into what you see on your gauge. So 
if you look at the plug connector, there are four connectors. Two are for the pump, two are for the signal feedback, four the, the level float assembly. And that is depicted here as well. So this guy also has the same mechanism. There's, a, there's um, a strip in there which then has resistant points and that changes based on where the float is. And just like the other one, it has a plug with only two connectors this time because of the fact that there's no pump living on this side. So what usually goes wrong is that either corrosion just makes the place all murky. As you can see, that screw is pretty badly off. But at times there's also mechanical damage to, to the arm itself. Now a good example here is there's a cover missing. There should be a plastic sheet holding this. Something similar to this to protect the, the gauge assembly, the level assembly. But this one seems to be missing. So that allows the mechanism to kind of splay out, outwards. At times that's a problem, at times not really, but the most obvious issue here is that there's wear on the strips. I don't know how badly it's affecting the readings, but we should be able to find out. Sorry about that. We should be able to find out and see whether there is anything wrong here. So the next step is to take electrical readings and see whether we have feedback across the range of the float. To do that, I will need my multimeter, which I do not have at this point. So let's take a break, shall we? We are back on the bench. Time for a quick autopsy to see what happened or went wrong here. And it's simple, really simple, because I explained how the unit works. Float at the end of a boom arm, which then attaches to a, a resistance board that gives reading to the instrument cluster. So here, there are two retainer clips that are supposed to hold the boom arm in place. So that guy and that guy. So what happens is the strip runs on the, on the I mean, the, the, the spring runs on the, on the resistor strip, which then gives readings. For that to happen effectively, the boom arm is supposed to be compressed to the strip board. So if that doesn't happen, then, you know, in this case, it pops out and the board can no longer make contact and which ends up giving you wrong readings or no readings at all. So in this case, it's a plastic wear and tear item which cannot really be uh, repaired. And in that case, we needed to replace. Now, if you're lucky, you can replace just that section of the assembly or the whole thing. Um, but it was time for this because even the wiring to the pump was pretty brittle. It's hard and brittle, so it's not very reliable. As well as... Uh, the color. The color denotes how much service life the item has seen. So when they're new, they'll be white or cream like the top side. The more life they go through, then the browner they get. So when you're shopping for one of these guys, it's better to get um, an item that is less brown because it'll mean it has less service life on it. Yep. Until the next time, this one ends here. Thank you for watching. Peace.